the purpose of this video is to demonstrate an online motion tracking app that is called JS Track. It is at the website jst.lucademian.com. This is the info page, but let me go ahead and enter the app. To get started on motion tracking, you first need to uh, bring a file into uh, the app. The preferred video type is MP4. So what I'm gonna do is bring up a file that I have in Google Drive. I'm gonna download it. And then once that's downloaded, I'm gonna go back to the tab with the JS Track app and just drag it in and it should import it. So we get a screen that says new project. I'm gonna call this uh, JS Track Demo. Uh, we can choose the frame rate, number of frames to move per click. I'm gonna leave all of those at their default setting, but I will go ahead and create a new file. So this sort of setup might be familiar to you if you've used the Logger Pro video analysis. The nice thing about this is it runs in Chrome. You don't need to install any software and it is free. So the first thing that I want to do is set where do I want to take my position measurements from. So in this video, I'm tossing the tennis ball over here um, from left to right. And it's always a good idea to put your reference frame somewhere over to the left hand side of the screen. Now I'm going to suggest, because the data comes out a little more interesting, to put the y-axis right about where your uh, object starts. And then I'm going to uh, suggest that you put the x-axis at either ground level or maybe table level. So it'll measure heights from that position when I start tracking the motion of the ball. And you can just go right to the axis and click and drag that if you need to adjust it. And you can even do that after you've begun. So even if you have an object moving from right to left, I think it's a good idea to put your origin over here on the left so that you're always measuring positive positions in both the X direction and the Y direction. One thing I might wanna check is just how the video plays. I noticed on this clip, for whatever reason, there's a little bit of a pause at the beginning. So I actually have to frame it forward to the third frame until it starts to move. I'm clicking down here to advance frame by frame. So one of the nice things that's incorporated in the app is if you need to ignore frames at the beginning or the end, you can actually drag these little triangles to where you wanna start your um, analysis. So I'm gonna actually drag that to this frame because I know that right after that, the ball is moving. So that's something that you may need to adjust. If you import a longer video, that will allow you to ignore some of the unnecessary time that isn't actually incorporated into the motion of the object that you're tracking. My next step is to set the scale of the video. And it's important when you record your video that you have some sense of scale um, in the clip. So I do have a meter stick here. And really, I should probably try when recording the video to throw the object above that meter stick. Um, I believe I'm a little bit in front, so that throws off the scale with perspective, but it shouldn't be too horrible. To set the scale, you go to the second button, which says Create Scale. You click. It gives you a color. You can change the color if you want. I'll go ahead and create. And down here, notice there is a little um, information that's listed. It says click for first end of the scale. So I want to click on one end of the meter stick. And the way that the cursor is set up with kind of a crosshair, so I'm actually going to try to very carefully pick the end of the meter stick and click. Now, it doesn't look like anything happened unless you notice down here that it says click for second end of scale. So now I want to take the crosshairs and place it even with the left end of the meter stick. Notice that a line is created and there's a text box. The text box is asking for how long is that line you just drew. And this is one meter because it's a meter stick on the screen. 
One thing that's nice is these handles become active. You can actually click and drag them. So if you feel like maybe you didn't drag the length accurately, you can click and drag them and adjust them at any point of the analysis. Now I'm ready to track the motion of the ball. That's where I go to this first button, create new track, and I can give it a name. I'm going to call it tennis ball projectile and click create. You'll notice that a new information bar comes here and I can start my analysis of the motion. This is a little bit tricky. In order to click on the point, you have to hold down the shift key. So if I try to click on it without holding down the shift key, nothing's gonna happen. Once I've hit shift, then I'm able to track the motion of the object. So I'm gonna take my crosshair, carefully place it on the tennis ball and click. Now, I don't see anything on the screen. If I hit shift again, it's gonna show me that I actually plotted a point at that point. And I also noticed that my data table is starting to populate with time. This would be the first frame, so time zero. The horizontal position, so how far to the right of the y-axis I am. Notice it's essentially zero. I must have been clicked a little bit to the right of that axis. And then in the y position, that would be the height, essentially, of the tennis ball. I'm about a half meter above where I drew my origin. So I'm going to go back into data collection mode by holding shift. And again, if I release shift, I can see where I've plotted. Holding shift again, I'm going to track the motion of the tennis ball carefully as it moves through the air. Now, it looks like I missed a point. I can go back and you can see that I must have double clicked. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that point and hit delete. And I think it took care of my double click. I'm going to hit shift again and go back into data collection mode. And I'll track the rest of the points. And again, if I want to ever check, I can release the shift key. Now, the setting right now is actually just showing me the last few points. Um, that is a setting that you can change at that first step. I'm going to go ahead and hit shift again and finish tracking the motion of the tennis ball. Now, notice that my data points even did go below that initial axis. And we can see if I scroll through my data, let me close this. There it is. There's my negative uh, position. So I'm done collecting data at this point, And what I really want to do is take that data and analyze it. So the easiest way to do that is actually just to highlight it and copy it. And before I do that, I want to point something out about the time. So this particular video um, had frame rate of 1 30th of a second. So every frame that it moves goes forward 1 30th of a second. And in decimal form, that's 0 0.033 seconds. So let me go ahead and highlight that data. I'm going to hit Control C or Command C if you're on a Mac to copy it. And then I'm going to open up a Google Sheet and paste that data in. So I've opened up a new spreadsheet in Google Drive. And I can go ahead and paste the data. I'm actually going to leave one row open for headings. So I'm going to hit Control V, and the data comes over. I want to know what this data is. So my next step would be to label each column. First column was time. The second column was just called x in JS track. I'm going to call it x position. And then the third column was y position the vertical position also in meters. If you're interested in seeing the graphing and analysis of the data, I'll post a follow-up video where I'll demonstrate that. I'll put a link to that in the description notes. I'll also put a link to JS Track so that you can find that. And I'll also post a shared Google folder with some videos that you might try to analyze with JS Track. Thanks for watching and have fun analyzing that data. Thank you.